totally and entirely delirious. I've had the weirdest day. Um, <laughs> oh my God, while I was in Europe, I set my entire calendar from there. And for some reason, my phone was set two hours before. So all my client work, I set two hours I set basically in Chicago time and I live in LA and uh, hmm, you can imagine how my day has been. In the past I would have judged myself as flaky. You so flaky, Veronica. You so flaky. <laughs> but instead, I can't stop laughing. I'm like, V, woo, Mercury must be in retrograde. And um, okay, this message has nothing to do with what I just shared. This is selenite, by the way, in case you're wondering. I love it. I put it under my chair and I use it while I have my sessions and during meditation and while I'm writing. Um, so selenite's a powerful stone. You can actually clear other crystals on selenite. Pretty amazing, yes. Specifically, I've had a couple of requests for one woman asked, you know who you are, uh, asked uh, whenever she's in the car, she experiences anxiety. So she feels like she's either going to cause an accident or an accident is going to happen. And so the anxiety, she's very tense while she's driving and anxious. And then another woman sent me a note saying she has that same anxiety when she's flying or driving to a new place or meeting somebody for the first time and it's debilitating and uncomfortable. So how to deal with it. This video is for anyone who experiences anxiety in any form. Okay, it's just very common. First of all, know that it's super common. I talk about this in other videos. It's there's nothing wrong with you. Okay, so if you have a judgment that there's something wrong with you, that's actually amplifying the anxiety, making it bigger. And there's an opportunity to really look at the judgments. I'm not saying to get rid of your judgment because that's another form of trying to get rid of something. If you try to get rid of the judgmental mind, it's going to become more judgmental. This is an opportunity to wake up and utilize the challenges that we face, the feelings that we don't like, the judgments that run through our minds that. Uh, um, we don't like and really come into a place of acceptance of what is and so it's not that we choose to continue you know judging ourselves and others but we just when we become aware that there's a part of the self that's judgmental or a part of the self that's anxious and instead of trying to get rid of it uh, one woman basically who had the fear of traveling on planes or to new places she says I've done everything four years I've been tapping I've been using essential oils I've been doing all of this nothing's worked well that's a clue right there when we are trying to get rid of something it's going to perpetuate okay and I know we've all heard this but it's it's another thing in application so every time we notice the part of the self. Oh my God, I feel anxious right now and I have to walk into a meeting. What do I do? I have to get rid of this. That's going to make it worse. That's going to make it so much bigger. And if what ends up happening is we end up shrinking and going in really small and not talking and just going into a, you know, really tight kind of anxious place and playing small and our true essence doesn't come out because we're so busy trying to hide there's another clue word trying to hide the anxiety that we end up hiding everything. Because you can't hide one part of the self without hiding the other. Eventually it pops up. So let's take a breath together. Let's start there, okay? So let's just let go of everything I just said, <clears throat> if you can. And just choose to come into your breath really simply. This is always going to bring you to the present moment. Anxiety lives in the mind. It lives in the worry about the future, typically. Anxiety is afraid of what's going to happen. Okay, afraid of the car crashing, afraid of what this person's going to think of you when you start talking, afraid of the future, it has nothing to do with the present. Anxiety has nothing to do with the present moment. Okay, so that's a beautiful thing to realize, right? Because we realize, oh, my anxiety is just afraid of the future. So it's part of the mind and ego's functioning. And the mind and the ego is not a bad thing. Again, that's certainly not something we want to try to get rid of. We wouldn't know our names without our egos. We wouldn't be able to function in the world without the mind. This is an amazing computer when we can power it with love, when we can 
reprogram the mind with love and acceptance, presence, compassion, and let the mind serve our greater vision, our greater good, the heart's journey, it's an extraordinary way of living. So there is a way to live in harmony with the mind and the heart, right? And so the first thing we do is notice, wow, I'm anxious. Okay, I'm just being pulled into the future. There's an opportunity for exercise, a new muscle. So in the past, I have buried this, tried to get rid of it, and that's how I've dealt with anxiety. Now, yes, there's a new way for me to work with this. There's a new muscle for me to power, for me to strengthen. Like any other muscle that has not been utilized, it's going to take time and it's going to take a repetition, right? And it might feel sore at first, <laughs> and for others it may feel great. You may love that, that feeling that you're working it. But basically what we do every time we feel anxious is migrate first and foremost to the breath. So let's take a breath together, okay? We're going to go deeper. This isn't about just avoiding everything and going into the breath. We're going to work through it. We're going to use the challenge. The anxiety is an opportunity to wake up a little more, okay? So we come into the breath really easy. Breathe into the belly. Okay, when we breathe into the belly, we ground. When we breathe shallow in the heart, in the chest, uh, it's a little harder to really come into the body. We want to ground in our physical bodies because guess what? Our physical body is here in the moment. It's present. You can touch it. You can taste. You can smell. You can really be here. If you are in the mind, try to Try to prove to me a thought you're having, like show it to me. It's not real. You can't actually touch it. <laughs> you can't see it. So we just come to what we can see, what we can touch. Really easy way. We always have that, our breath. Become aware of the body as it breathes. My teacher, Leonard Jacobson, says that, and I love it. Be aware of the body breathing. It's so simple, and it brings us home to the present moment immediately. For me, having things like crystals, flowers, candles, um, focus on one of those things. Focus. You can even focus on a glass of water, okay? Just focus on that water as you breathe. This is going to bring you into the present moment. And now, so that's the physical reality, right? Okay, the body is breathing. I physically feel that. That glass of water, I physically see that. So we come to the physical moment. That'll bring us to the present. We're exercising that new muscle of presence, of coming into the moment, dropping out of the thinking mind. As the yogis say, we're, you know, we have all we have five different layers, five different koshas, five different um, shields. The mind is one of them. The Westerners are parked in the Manumaya Kosha, the mental body, right? We're, ch we're choosing to exercise the bliss body. We're choosing to, to allow for the other sheaths or the other part of, parts of the self to awaken. Okay, so I highly recommend coming into presence several times every day just for a couple minutes. And I'm, I'm sharing a very simple way to do that. Come into awareness of the body breathing, just temporarily dropping out of the thinking mind and being aware of the body breathing, feeling the uh, the the breath coming to the belly especially and look at that glass of water or the flower and then we move into the emotional body ask yourself where do I feel so this is the second thing right first we got present with the breath the physical reality the inner the breath and then the outer a glass or a flower okay the second thing Ask yourself where in your body you feel your anxiety. Where do you feel that anxiety? For me, I was having a little bit of anxiety earlier because I felt flighty. I felt like a flake. That was the word that was coming up a little bit. Uh, that I had confused my schedule, my phone, my technology was not in accordance with reality. And um, so I felt anxiety come up because judgment came up. Oh my God, how will this person perceive me? How unprofessional. <laughs> it's funny now. but um, So then the anxiety came up and I felt it immediately. I was like, Ooh, okay, there's that. So I asked myself, where do I feel the anxiety? You can ask yourself this now. Where do you feel the anxiety in your body? Or when you're driving, ask yourself, where do I feel the anxiety? For me, it was in the belly. So I got present with the anxiety. The anxiety will... will um, exaggerate itself and will uh, 
become out of control, so to speak. Some people experience sweating, heat flashes, chest like breaking out into like rashes and you know whatever. Um, so it becomes visible. The body is basically making it visible. It's ensuring that you're going to have to deal with it. The only way through is through. Another way of saying that, the only way out of this embarrassing, quote-unquote, embarrassing situation, embarrassing also annotates there's judgment on the anxiety. So there's an opportunity to just accept it as part of you, okay? It's really important to, to begin accepting that this is part of you because when you can accept your vulnerability, you will be able to accept your power, the true power that lives within you. You'll be able to accept the brilliance and the genius that lives within you. The same degree that we accept our vulnerability is the same degree to which we can accept our strengths. So it's really important that we expand our aperture, expand our light, expand our presence to accept the whole of who we are. And that's the path to liberation in my experience. Um, so again, when I when that anxiety comes forward, and it's just an opportunity, the body and the everything's happening, the the sweating, and it's just an opportunity ensuring. Okay, if you're not listening, if you're not going to turn within and be present and allow me to be here, I'm going to do everything I can to and make it even bigger. That's what anxiety says because I need you to be present with me. Anxiety is saying. That's in my experience, okay? So every challenge that comes up is simply inviting us. The only way through is to turn within. The only way out is in. The only way through is through. So out there, trying to put on makeup and go out there and look perfect, that's not going to work. But when we can um, over and over again work that presence muscle again and again, it's like going to the gym every single day. For me, it's taken years and years and I don't want to be discouraging, but it's been an amazing journey. I've enjoyed it. I've loved it. And other times I've hated it. <laughs> but what's amazing is at this stage of my journey, and it's still continuing, is to go, wow, in that situation, I used to be so out of my body and so um, ungrounded, you know, so, so scattered. And now I'm here, like I'm really present. So it's really powerful to notice that and to, to see how building that muscle of presence it really does strengthen and it really becomes easier to walk whole and powerful and present and loving and compassionate regardless of what's going on in you or in others. Um, so as that anxiety is coming up, it's just like a doorbell ringing saying turn within. Every time we're present, even just for a second or 30 seconds or a minute with the things that we normally run from, we are expanding our light. We are basically shining light on what was once dark, what was once hidden. And guess what? It's becoming illuminated. And we are becoming more and more illuminated, more and more fleshed out, more and more whole. It's an amazing journey. So slowly, slowly, we're migrating from the, from the mind and ego, which is living in an illusory, in a future that doesn't even exist. 99% of what we fear doesn't actually happen, right? So we migrate from that fear to presence, to the truth of who we are. And from there, we wake up into a whole other reality. We wake up into a sort of immunity from the um, hurricane of the world, no pun intended. Um, you know, the eye of the storm is, the center of the storm is still. So can we be that still presence? Life is going to continue to speed up and do what it's doing. So it's really important at this time that we practice with ourselves. We practice with our own little storms, with our own anxiety. And then we'll be able to be the ones we have been waiting for. We'll be able to be the ones that show up for others in a way that is deeply healing and deeply nourishing and deeply loving, deeply transformative. But first and foremost, we start with ourselves. So I celebrate my anxiety 
my fears, you know, those feelings that came up, come up, I celebrate them when they arise because they're my teachers. You know, they, they invite me back home. They invite me to build that presence muscle even more. Can I be present with that anxiety? Every time I'm present with the things that I love or, do, or don't love about myself, I'm able to grow in the things I love about myself too. We're just expanding our own light, right? As Rumi says, or someone said this, where we stumble, there lies our treasure. So if we stumble out in the world and we feel like a fool, it's just an opportunity to notice the mind judging, oh my God, what did that person think of me? And then you feel the anxiety building, oh my God, what are they thinking about me? What's going to happen? Instead of going outward with the energy, thinking about what's happening out there, we turn within, we become present, you just flow with life, and that fear and anxiety disappears because there's a deep trust inside that you're home, that you're here, that you're present. That anxiety is much deeper than that car or the plane. There's a much deeper anxiety. So I also invite with this message a five-day give anxiety a voice. Write in your journal for five mornings in a row or maybe at the end of the day five afternoons in a row or whenever you're feeling it five days in a row let it rip give the anxiety a voice and ask it a very important question what does it need what is the anxiety trying to tell you and what is the anxiety need from you okay okay long video but it's important so I'm probably gonna post the whole thing I love you all dearly and just keep in mind we are all human. There is no need to try to be perfect or flawless or polished. Love yourself as you are. Love yourself as you are and you will realize and you'll see and notice that people show up in your life who love you and celebrate you and thank you for being real because it will help them have the courage to be real. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys see me in this these videos where, you know, I'm sharing positive words of inspiration but believe me in my own life I go through my challenges and I stumble and I fall and I have a sweet way of working through it and getting back up and really just celebrating those times but there are times that I'm just like oh my god you know I mean I'm human we are all human we only see certain people in the light because that's what they're showing that's what most of us do um, but it's really important to remember that we're all human we all sit on the toilet and we all <laughs> We all, we're all human, so honor your humanness. It's awesome. And uh, remember that that presence, your divine self, you are a divine being, a present being, having a human experience, you know, in the world of time. So enjoy it. I love you all, and I will see you soon. Mm -hmm.